To illustrate the great potentialities of this equipment, let us trace this problem briefly as it proceeds through the machines. On a few feet of magnetic tape, the weights, thrusts, and all other basic information for the 25 different rocket designs are recorded. Also on tape are recorded instructions The following film shows both black and white photos and color film of some of the early calculating and computing machines developed by IBM at Poughkeepsie, New York. The color film portions are from the original film and are not AI-created or colorized images. Although IBM traces its earliest history back to Endicott, New York, and later to San Jose and other locations, IBM established a vital presence in Poughkeepsie in 1941, which became one of its most important production sites. During the 1940s and 50s, IBM transitioned from electromechanical tabulating equipment to electronic computing. Poughkeepsie became a crucial site for the shift in direction, evolving from manufacturing munitions and typewriters in the early 1940s to a technological hub for advanced electronic computing systems by the late 1950s. The Poughkeepsie lab was central to many of these innovations, and the film shows many scenes of manufacturing of the IBM 604 and components of the IBM 650 machines. We hope you enjoy this brief look back at a pivotal time period in computer history. IBM now presents the first of a new line of equipment known as electronic data processing machines. These several machines work together as a unit to provide one of the fastest and most versatile means known for the processing of data. New principles have been applied to provide vast capacity for the storage of data and instructions. In magnetic tapes, in magnetic drums, in electrostatic storage, this data can be made available in a few millionths of a second for use in the arithmetic unit. Work which would take even recent electronic sequential calculators 50 hours to do, this equipment can accomplish in less than seven minutes. Such an achievement did not happen overnight, but was developed over a long period of years by scores of scientists and technicians, and was based on decades of experience in manufacturing machines for use in business offices. This association with business and science reveal the vital need for electromechanical devices which could perform advanced computing operations. It led to the first of seven significant steps in the growth of today's giant calculators, when in 1929, construction and testing of the first calculating machine to compute and print mathematical tables was completed. This statistical calculator was presented to Columbia University in December of that year. Interest stimulated by the work performed on this calculator led to the founding of the Thomas J. Watson Astronomical Computing Bureau at Columbia. Here was a new departure in scientific calculation, tiresome additions, subtractions, multiplications, the looking up of numbers and tables, the reading and writing of figures, all were done by the machine. The need for devices which could go beyond this and actually assist in solving mathematical equations was first filled by the automatic sequence controlled calculator. This, the first giant calculator, was composed of electromechanical devices and was dedicated at Harvard University in 1944. It was immediately applied to the solving of sequential calculations in naval ordnance problems. In 1946, after years of research, electronics was applied to the first production line electronic multiplier when the type 603 was announced. This was expanded two years later into the Type 604 electronic calculator, which is capable of performing 60 operations in a problem at a constant speed of 6,000 problems per hour. 
Such speed is possible because electronic devices have the property of producing rapidly recurring pulses and can be used to count at extremely high rates, up to millions of times per second. The 604 is so widely used in industry today that it is being built on a production line basis. Each machine employs 1,300 electronic tubes. This experience in electronic research and application in 1947 led to the building of the Selective Sequence Electronic Calculator, which was installed at IBM World Headquarters in New York. The SSEC solved some of the largest mathematical computations ever completed up to that time. For example, scientists encountered a problem dealing with splitting the uranium atom requiring nine million sequential calculations. A mathematician working with a desk calculator would have had to labor over it for 100 years. The SSEC produced the answer in 100 hours. In 1949, the card programmed electronic calculator was announced. Designed for scientific and engineering sequential calculations, this computer was organized from regular production machines. Instructions originate from punched cards fed into the card reader, from which figures are placed in the storage unit for later use, or sent on to the electronic unit, which can calculate more than 80 multiplications a second. The answers may either be printed or punched in cards. Meanwhile, in the IBM laboratories, Research was going on more intensively than ever. Machines were needed with greater speed, greater storage capacity, and great flexibility. Extensive research was made into all available electronic tube designs to develop them to meet the precise requirements of computers. One such accomplishment is the cathode ray tube, developed for use as an electrostatic storage unit. Each cathode ray tube can store the equivalent of 140 decimal digits. Random access to these is almost instantaneous. In a few millionths of a second, any number stored on a tube may be selected for use. Information is stored on the screen of the tube through the presence and absence of charged spots. A scanning electronic beam reads these charges and converts them into electronic pulses. The pulses are interpreted as numbers or instructions. Another component developed as a storage medium is the magnetic drum. These drums are rotating cylinders surfaced with a material which can be easily magnetized. Thousands of digits are stored on the surface of the drum through the presence and absence of magnetized areas. As the drums rotate, and are read by many reading units, all the information on their surfaces is available thousands of times a minute. Still another development is the magnetic tape. The tapes are plastic oxide coated ribbons with information recorded on them by means of magnetized spots. The information in several office filing cabinets can be stored on one reel of tape. It is possible to record data onto the tapes or to read information from them at the rate of thousands of decimal digits a second. Such components are being investigated and developed constantly. Now more time will be available for pre-testing each model as well as for creative thinking. 
To illustrate the great potentialities of this equipment, let us trace this problem briefly as it proceeds through the machines. On a few feet of magnetic tape, the weights, thrusts, and all other basic information for the 25 different rocket designs are recorded. Also on tape are recorded instructions to tell the equipment how to do the problem. When the equipment is started, the instructions and data are read from the tape at a rate equivalent to 12,500 decimal digits per second. The instructions and data then pass to the electrostatic storage unit, where they appear on the cathode ray tube screens. Part of the information instructs the machine to begin the program and carry out the specified calculations. Instructions and data go back and forth between the electrostatic storage and the arithmetic unit, and computing is accomplished. Intermediate results are recorded on the magnetic drum to be available when required, all under control of the instructions originally stored on the magnetic tape. The results are recorded on the tape for permanent storage or recorded by the printer. In this problem, the values are printed for each second of the rocket's path for the velocity, position, acceleration, yaw, pitch, and roll of the rocket. The final values tell where the rocket will land. All of the data, not only on one rocket design, but on 25 variations, are produced in less than seven minutes. Thus, it is now practical to investigate hundreds of detailed designs because of the tremendous capacities and speeds of this new calculator. The reading speeds are significant. Writing is not only fast, but versatile. Processing speeds permit computations in microseconds. Storage is vast and flexible. This is a triumph of advanced storage and calculating techniques, components developed against a large background of research. A triumph, yes. But no matter how great a thing is, there is always room for improvement. Today, the components and parts, the machines of tomorrow, are taking shape in the research laboratories. In order to ensure that no approach has been ignored, researchers are studying the characteristics of many different elements. One component being investigated is the transistor, a small piece of germanium and wire. There is also research in progress pertaining to magnetic cores and ferroelectric materials. The defense effort has taken priority, but advanced studies are underway to adapt new electronic components for service in business. For electronics is the fastest and most versatile means known for handling accounting and statistical data. The people of IBM long ago took the lead in this field and are maintaining it with advanced production methods applied here to the new electronic data processing machines being assembled. Yes, new progress is being made because the electron, the smallest particle in nature, has been harnessed to count and brought to the aid of scientists and businessmen who are expanding the frontiers of knowledge. For after all, the real barrier is time. The shape of things to come may now be resolved in decades instead of centuries. The years may be compressed, the future stream accelerated, because the human mind 
has been relieved of much repetitive work to devote itself to creative thinking. A deliberate choice in nomenclature. In the early 1950s, IBM chose to call their early computing equipment electronic data processing machines rather than computers or computer systems, for several important reasons. Firstly, in the early 20th century, the word computer most often referred to a person who performed calculations, not a machine. IBM wanted to emphasize the growing role of automation technology through precision machines and labor saving devices. Second, IBM's primary customer base was composed of businesses, not scientists. Terms like electronic data processing sounded more aligned with business applications such as inventory management and accounting, rather than academic, scientific, or military applications. Perhaps additionally, the government's ENIAC of 1946 and Remington Rand's UNIVAC of 1951 already used the term computer as part of their official names, and the question of patent rights surrounding the first computer was thought likely to become a future litigation issue.